Okay, now that we're all set up, I'm going to show you a couple watercolor tips and tricks that will help you with any kind of watercolor painting that you'd like to do. Okay, so let's get started and set up our workstation. First thing you want to do is if you're a righty, you want to place all of your necessary materials on the right side. You want to put your palette, your water, and your napkins all on the right side so you're not dragging paint over your, your painting. Uh, next thing you want to do is to put, take the paint from the tubes out and put them into the wells. I like to skip a space if I have enough room for it. I like to leave one in between. Um, basically you're just going to open up the tube like that and squeeze out a little bit. You don't need a lot of watercolor paint because it's going to be diluted. And add the water either to the entire well like this and dilute it or you can take some of the paint a little bit at a time and dilute it in the mixing area. This works better if you only need a little bit of color or if you want to mix two colors together. That's where the mixing area is for. This in the well works better if you need a lot of color. You want to water it down to about the consistency of 2% milk. You just keep dragging water until you get it to the right transparency. Okay, so our first basic watercolor technique would be the wet and to wet. The first thing you need to understand about watercolors is it's a transparent medium, which means the more water you add, the lighter it gets. The white of the paper will come through. So the wet on wet technique is a very loose technique, great for backgrounds um, and just getting real fuzzy soft edges. First thing you want to do is just wet the area that you want to do the wet on wet just with some clean, clear water. Next thing you can do is take pull any color from the palette and you can see that when you add the paint to the water it will bleed and creates these fuzzy edges. You could blend colors this way. The more wet the paper is, the more it's going to bleed. But it's really only going to travel to where I put the water. Okay, you can see that it will create an actual line there and stop. It doesn't like to travel beyond the water. So that's the wet on wet technique. It's a very loose, great for backgrounds. Wet into dry is your second basic watercolor technique. Basically, you're just taking the wet paint and you're putting it onto dry paper. You have much more control with the paint at this point and your paint colors are much more vibrant. You can still mix and blend colors as well by letting them hit each other on the ends. Okay, so the next technique is dry brushing. This is a really good way to get some interesting te uh, texture in your painting. Basically what you want to do is to get some paint on your brush and then dab it on the napkin so that it's not so wet. You really do want to have a dry brush. And you take it and you drag it along the surface to pick up the texture of your cold pressed paper. Remember we said that this has a slight texture. If you had rough paper, you would be able to get more of a texture created. A lot of people use this in landscape paintings in order to get the water reflections. Okay, the next technique is a wash. What we're gonna do first is a flat wash and then I'll show you how to do a graded wash. What you wanna do first is to have some clean water Fill the space with the clean water. This will give you a smoother transition, a flatter range of color. That's what we're really trying to do is to get a flat color here. And when the paint is wet, when I showed you the wet on wet, it fuzzes the edges. It doesn't allow it to be so streaky. I'm just gonna start at the top and I'm gonna apply the paint. Keep loading the brush. more color and overlap the line. Don't worry too much if it doesn't look so even right now. It will uh, it'll even itself out as it dries. I like to sometimes tilt the paper down a little on an angle a little bit just to help it flow down to the edge. Okay, if you end up with a bead of color at the end that looks a little darker, Come back in with what we call a thirsty brush, brush which just means it's dry. And it, you can lift up the color at the end just to sort of even it out. That's your flat wash. 
Okay, the next technique is a graded wash. You'll use this a lot if you're doing landscapes or portraits. You're gonna start the same way you did the wash. You're gonna wet the area. You don't need a lot of water when you're doing this. You just wanna get the, the area slightly shiny. Okay, I'm gonna start at the top. The only difference between a wash and a graded wash is that I'm going to try to get this to become lighter as it goes down. So instead of reloading my brush this time, I'm going to take a little bit of paint off and pull the paint down with a little bit of water. I didn't apply new paint. I'm just pulling it down so that it slowly grades. And if you notice, I, I'm tilting my paper too. When I get to the bottom, I want it to grade out to white, so I'm going to clean the brush off completely, dab it on the paper towel, and just pull the color down. Okay, so this is a graded wash. You can either grade it down to white or you can grade it into another color. Okay, the last technique I'm going to show you is a way to correct mistakes or in some instances use it to, to remove paint from areas that are too small to work around. The first one is if you apply watercolor paint to a piece of paper and you're not happy with the way it looks, okay, I'm, I don't like that at all. All I need to do is to take my napkin and remove the paint. I'm just going to soak it up, okay? Most watercolor paints will stain to some degree, but you can always apply more water to lighten and pull the color up, okay? So you don't need to worry too much if you put the wrong color down or it's way too dark, you can always lift it back up. And lastly, even if the paint is dry, this area was painted yesterday, so it's been dry for quite some time, you can come in and remove the paint by just wetting the area and again, lifting the paint out. A lot of times in a landscape, we'll do this to create little tree branches that are way too tiny to paint around. And you can just keep lifting. The more you wet the paper and pull the color up, the closer you'll get to the, to the lighter version and to the white of the paper.